All right, we're joined today by Judy Greer. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are, as always, whatever we do, we, we typically talk about backgrounds. If you're listening to this, Ken Jack has like the green screen background that Zoom has, which is just a globe. You're the in universal logo. Yeah. You're in a very nice looking room with some paintings behind you. Oh, I'm yeah. the loser here. I lost. I blew it. It's, you know what? It's clean. It's simple. I'm focusing on your face only. Not always a good thing. But that's okay. That's... <laughs> you look very well groomed today. I like your hair. It looks great. <laughs> okay. There you go. That, that's all I only do is to fish for compliments. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> um, lot to get to today, but let's start off the top. Okay. Audible scripted comedy, self centered debut today. You yes. today when this is wait, today when this is airing, this is this is so this is airing on Sunday, by the way. This is a okay. Sunday this will have the, already so aired. Yeah. You probably already listened to it. So there exactly. you go. You, Kim Cottrell, Jane Lynch, let me read the synopsis and then and then yeah. you can dive in and 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 tell me if the synopsis is worthy of being read. Okay. Tell okay. the story of a woman, played by you, who goes to a weekend retreat hosted by a model turned wellness thought leader, played by Kim Cottrell. But what's supposed to be a fun getaway quickly turns into one saw like torture after another where anything can happen. Good. Good. I didn't write that, but I know you didn't because I have the same one that someone <laughs> sent to me. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if he's going to have like new things added to the. <laughs> we, we read one. We read one the other day. Oh, that, yeah. That was, one was tough. <laughs> it was a synopsis for somebody. And it was, it was, it was almost not proofread. like somebody hacked the document and then just scrambled the words. Cause I was reading it live. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. This isn't, this isn't even English. <laughs> no, that was a, that was, that was what I had. What in, in your own words, though, what can you tell about this project? Right. Well, I'm always going to come to a synopsis of a project I'm in probably through the lens of my character. So, um, you know, to me, this is this is a woman entering her 40s who has up until now successfully tried to ignore the zeitgeist of like, you must be better. You must be thinner. You must be younger. You must look prettier. You must have this and that. And now she finds herself um, jumping in head first into this world of uh, self-empowerment, self-improvement, self-love, but it's all really, um, it's a comedy horror, horror comedy, which I'm realizing is my favorite genre now. And, um, you yeah. know, it's all under the guise of, of this guru essentially like sucking the life out of people so that she can continue being young. And You've done voice work in the past too, but what's different about a pro we always like, cause we've, we've done plenty of interviews with people who have an audible original. They've done voice work, but it's different because yeah. the voice work, there is no physical form anywhere to kind of yeah. put off all the comedy. So you have to do a lot of the, like the visual comedy through your voice. Yeah. They add in sound effects. So that's cool. But um, <laughs> I would say that uh, it's a little harder to cheat. Like it's a little harder. I know that there's no editor that's going to like cut away to the other actor, or I can like really lose myself in like the comedy of a prop, um, which I might do if I'm like, like flailing in a scene in a movie or a TV show. And in this, like, sometimes I'll think that I'm like, Hey, come on, let's go and try and see what's happening. And they'll be like, we need you to do it again with a little more energy. And I'm like more energy than that <laughs> because they can hear that it's like super forced and I'm actually exhausted. And that's not a lot of energy. That's just loud. So then, you know, I think there's like some cheating that cannot happen. I mean, I don't have to go through here and make up for two hours and I can literally wear pajamas, but you can't fake energy. So I guess I'm obsessed with energy. <laughs> Sounds like actually the <laughs> Kim Cattrall character in this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we actually, yeah. we, we talked about it with someone recently that were, uh, they were promoting an Audible original as well. Um, and something that I think is kind of cool about these is that every listener has their own unique experience because everyone has their own different imagination, right? Like if you and me watch like a no. movie, like we've seen the same thing. <laughs> okay. So you think everyone has their own same thing. 
<laughs> We're all robots. <laughs> we yeah. all think the same thing. No, that's what's so, well, that's the same thing. I mean, obviously like Audible started as audiobooks only, which is like such an exciting transition for them to be making, or I should say addition to having like its own content and to be doing these scripted series because you're right. Like I've been a reader my whole life. Like when I was a child, my, my parents told my babysitters, like she's not allowed to sit and read. She has to go out and play. So they would take books away from me. So I come from a a family of big readers. My mind is always working. I use my imagination all the time and I really love that escape. And when I discovered Audible, gosh, like 12 years ago, I moved far away and had a long commute and and it was a gifted to me, a year subscription by my manager. And I was like, this is magic. I can still read, but I can also be stuck in traffic on the 101. And it changed my life. And I was still able to use my imagination. And, and so then to like be able to help contribute to like people discovering this, um, like, like these obviously original works, but like to kind of start like people are now listening to audiobooks a lot more. And I think it's really cool because there's a lot of people out there who can't, I mean, like a one author, I actually did his audiobook, Max Brooks. He's amazing. He, he wrote um, World War Z and, and, and devolution. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, he has a great story. He grew up and he was very dyslexic and reading was really hard for him. And he is a genius and discovered audiobooks and was able to take in more books than most readers because he could listen to them. And I don't really think there's any difference. And I think you're right. What's cool is being able to use your imagination. I feel like I've been talking for an hour. I'm so sorry. Oh, um, no. But, but, you know, to use your imagination, yes, everyone will imagine a character differently. Everyone will see uh, the background differently, the world differently. And what's so funny is when you are a reader and your favorite book gets turned into a movie and you go see it, you're like, no, yep, that's not that right. Harry Potter as that a kid. Is, <laughs> every, every movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's not Harry Potter. Like my hair, you know, and I think that that's one of the fun things about listening uh, again and still for some is that, you know, we can use our, we, we are, we're perfectly casting every, every book and every original and, you know, they're in the most perfect locations and they're wearing exactly what they should be wearing and all that stuff. That's, that's, you literally <laughs> just described me, by the way, you just described like, oh, I, good. I, we talk on this podcast all the time. I'm a movie first person. I, my reading comprehension level is it's it's so low it's just funny at this point so i i but dune i really wanted to read dune very badly which in my head by the way i cast timothy chalamet in the lead role no not to brag but that's just how i had it so i actually I just cast him in every lead role not to brag <laughs> but okay i i opened it up and i got like three lines in and i was like now nah, we're doing audiobook yeah. <laughs> i can't do this <laughs> yeah I, I had no chance so yeah i i did the same thing it's just it's yeah i've i'm like you know what maybe i'll read a second book Maybe this would be this, and now I'll read another book after that. 2022 is a year of new beginnings. (laughs) Maybe we'll turn you into a reader. Which I did. I was supposed to start reading it in December, and then it turned the page to the new year. I'm like, no, this is just a New Year's resolution. This is great. This works. Yeah. (laughs) uh, Was this story inspired, though, by anything specific? Because there are a lot of like wellness cults out there, and even just like the age of social media, it's these types of, of things and people and stories, they, it's of like, of course it every was, week. of course it was. Um, but I don't know if I, I mean, yes, there's tons of them. There's like a big one with a big movie star who is, you know, the owner of it. Um, I think that maybe started the ball rolling. Um, but you know, there's a, there's something for everyone in this space. You know, there's, there's like for people who are Christian, there's like the Christian blogger, perfect mom, wife, woman that the people follow. There's, you know, there's the, the person I'm thinking of in my head. There's the, you know, the vegan perfection woman who like, there's some, like whatever, wherever you find yourself, there's a guru for you. And so as we're all losing our minds and, and I think trying to like 
like this thing about, you know, trying to stay young, trying to stay relevant, but also being true to myself. Like, I don't know. I think everyone's getting really swell swept up in like self care and the self love movement. And, and so, um, we're kind of poking a little bit of fun of that, especially saying like, Oh, in order to change your life and make you only rely on yourself and love yourself just the way you are. You should do this cleanse and use these products and buy this, uh, these items that cost thousands of dollars. And it's so ridiculous and so unattainable. And that to me was hilarious. And I find myself like getting caught up in it constantly and like having to sort of like, like shake myself and be like, no, stop, close your computer, walk away, walk away. (laughs) It's getting away from the perfection. I love that. Uh, (laughs) So, so you and Kim and also Jane Lynch, Jane Lynch are also like, I think three of the best just, or just funniest actresses in the game, really. Oh, finish um, your just... thought. <laughs> so I will go on. Uh, did you guys get a chance to like work with each other in the studio at all? Or was this all done like separately it throughout was the time? Just like this. <laughs> I love that. I, I looked at their tiny little faces and tiny little boxes on a laptop. But I'll take it. And I was still super starstruck. We recorded this a year ago. So January, we all remember how insane January was. Um, and it was a it was a time when I think it was a scary time, like politically in this country. Uh, you know, we're like almost a year into a pandemic. The vaccines weren't out for everyone yet. And And I needed this so badly. I needed to do something fun and silly and funny. And imagine that, like, to yank myself out of the spiral, I'm sure we all found ourselves in. I got to go and, like, talk on the phone, essentially, to Jane Lynch and Kim Cattrall and have fun for a week. I I was, like, losing my mind. It was so awesome. And, And I was so excited to work with both of them. Pretty easy thing to say yes to. Just hang on the phone with yeah. them. Just tell, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Like in a world where you're so, like in that time where you're forced to be on the computer with people anyway, it's like may as well make it people worth being. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, hello. Yeah, it was. I mean, I would love to have done it in person, and this is as as everything else, second best. You know, <laughs> uh, self center, audible, out now. If you're listening, uh, you got to talk about a couple of your other stuff too. You are Let's in my favorite show of all time, Arrested <sighs> Development. Um, I have to talk about Arrested Development. We've interviewed, we've interviewed Tony Hale. We've <gasps> talked to Ron Howard. So we've had, we've had some alums. I, I, anyone else? I don't think so. Feel Maybe like, some guest like stars. We, yeah, guest stars. Yeah. So I want. I'll, okay, I'll start with the big one. You, I have to get a favorite moment from Arrested Development from you. Oh, which is an impossible yeah. thing to do. I know. Um, well. Well, my answer has changed um, since the passing of Jessica Walter. I uh, my first moments on set with Will Arnett with the hair down glasses and all that was like burned in my brain. Like if I experience dementia, I think I'll always remember <laughs> that. Um, but uh, oh, it's just so awful that. Anyway, so I would say my favorite is my drinking contest um, with, <laughs> I like always think of Mallory, uh, my drinking contest with Jessica mm. um, would probably go down as my favorite moment. Because I mean, she yeah. opens the show, just the, the light my hair on fire comment is just, uh, it just sets such a tone mm-hmm. that never lets up. It's, it, she's just impeccable with everything single thing she ever did it was like I bet the editors like oh yeah we just could use anything even when the camera even when it's like she's like the camera started rolling but they haven't started actually acting yet like I'm sure you could use what Jessica was saying because one time we were in San Diego for Comic-Con for Archer and our hotel rooms weren't ready and we all went to the restaurant to wait it out. And Jessica was already in there. So we sat down with her and we were like, oh, hey, can we sit with you? And like the look on her face for a split second was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> which you want from her. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then she was 
like, yes, of course, of course. And then she was saying, she kept asking the waiter if her room was ready. And he kept saying like, I don't work for the hotel. I work for the restaurant. And she was like, yes, but surely you can find out if my room is ready. And it was like, <laughs> while she was the most loving, wonderful peach, like there was a little bit of that in her, which you want. Life imitates art. It has to sometimes. I mean, come on. Are any of us that good? She's just like the best. And I remember <laughs> recently watching someone showed me that scene. I guess I was doing, I don't know, we were talking about her and that scene came up in the interview. And I was like, oh yeah, that's badass. The other question we always like to ask, and you actually have a pretty big connection because you were in Marvel movies, is the Russo's question is, is that one of those crazier things to look back on and realize that the Russo brothers were involved in Arrested Development, obviously so much involved in it, and be like, could you have imagined back then that those guys would have their hands on the highest grossing movie ever? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's Everyone always says yes to. That's the thing. They're like, it does, it does not shock us at all. Mm-hmm. There's nowhere in the world those two should be. I mean, maybe their kids would beg to differ, but um, and wives, but uh, then on a set, like they are the coolest, and they're so. Well, look, I was I haven't worked with them in a long time, but man, they were so kind, so lovely, so funny. Um, such hard workers. I'm a real sucker for professionalism and hard work. And, and, and they were just incredible. It doesn't surprise me at all. And like, Mm -hmm. and like, I don't know, you just like them. Like you want to be around them. Um, yeah, I'm really happy. It makes me so happy that when, when, you, you know, these jobs, like I started doing this over 20 years ago. And so to see the people that have had such great success and I, I, you know, gratefully include myself in that, like, I just feel like, oh my God, like, right. Like the good, like the cream does rise to the top. The good people really do keep working and keep creating and keep having success. And that's such a great, it's great to see. We'd love to talk to you about some of your other stuff too, as well as uh, including Descendants, uh, The Descendants, which we loved, one of our favorite movies, I think. And so just, it's one of those things where it must have been great for you. You know, you get to go to Hawaii, work with George Clooney, and we're um, in just an incredible <sighs> no. experience, I'm sure. But one of the funniest stories I had read, I remember, was from actually your 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 book of essays where you talk about your Oscars experience, which seems like it was a little yes. bit of a disaster, right? Yes. and um, Yes. Yes. It was awful. Like as soon as I stepped on the red carpet, I had this dress that was, it was beaded down the, fr- like a stripe of beading down the front, a stripe of beading down the back. And as soon as I stepped on the red carpet, someone stepped on my dress and yanked the beads and the beads all started to pour down. Now the red carpet at the Oscars is like the scariest thing I've ever experienced. I am not a red carpet lover. There are actors and entertainers who love a red carpet and they kill it. And they like, they just like, like it is, I should be taking beta blockers. I don't have any, (laughs) but I don't understand like how people can stand there and just be like, so, um, yeah, for any pretty picture you see of me on a red carpet, there's 75 where I'm like, um, and And yes, so my dress started unraveling in front of me. Um, My publicist, who wasn't even my publicist, because there's a whole other thing I won't get into about having credentials to even be on the red carpet. So sometimes the people you work with every single day can't, they're not getting those red carpet credentials. So then a different person you've never met is walking you down the red carpet. And that's also scary because now you're just there by yourself. People are screaming your names. They're much more excited about the super famous person in front of you and the more famous person behind you than you, but they have to say your name and they have to get your picture. My dress is unraveling. This publicist I didn't know very well was like trying to sew it up on the red carpet. (laughs) There's cameras everywhere. I'm getting screamed at. I'm trying to move along. I'm just praying that the beads like manage to stay together so I can get inside and deal with it. And then because the red carpet's so crazy and there's not many people allowed on it, as soon as it was over, my publicist is like, okay, I have to go and meet another client. Have fun. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm by myself and I'm walking into this Kodak theater, which I don't know if it's still called that. It was like massive place. I'm just standing there by myself. I mean, how scary is it to walk into just a party at your friend's house by yourself? Like that is right. enough to give me anxiety. Imagine the Academy Awards, you know? And mm-hmm. so like, 
I don't know where to go. I'm usually like, I'll just go to the bar, but like, I don't even know where anything is. And I'm by myself and I don't see anyone and I'm standing there and I'm terrified and I'm like so nervous. And I'm like, of course, thank God for cell phones sometimes, right? You're like, I'll just stand at this cocktail table and text. And, um, anyway, so finally my friend Ariane Phillips, who was nominated for best costume designer that year, walked in and saved my life. Um, Rose Byrne also walked in and also saved my life and got to chat with them. Um, and then it was time to go and do something that I always do, which is take my Spanx off after the red carpet. Cause they're really um, gross and tight and I hate them, but they do make for a prettier picture. I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> not that everyone needs it. I just like it. It's my own choice. Anyway. So I go in the bathroom. I have to take my dress off completely because of the way that it's like fit to my body, take my Spanx off, um, put my dress back on, zip it up myself. Thanks yoga. And I go <laughs> in, I meet Shailene Woodley. We decide to walk in together. We walk through the front row and there's like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and all the biggest stars are sitting in the front row. And I'm like chatting with them and everything. And I look back many rows farther and my friend, um, Susan Misher is sitting back there and she's like looking at me and pointing at her phone. And I'm like, hi, yeah, I know I'm here. <laughs> and she's kind of looking sort of panicked. And I get to my seat and I look at my phone and she texted like your lingerie straps are hanging out <laughs> of the side of your dress. I'm going to assume everyone knows what a lingerie strap is. It's like the little strap that helps the garment hang on the hanger. Uh. And usually <laughs> I cut them out so that never happens. And trust me, I have cut every lingerie strap out of every garment that I've owned ever since that <laughs> night, but they're hanging out of my dress under my arm. So when I'm like chatting with people and <laughs> oh my God, I just like, it was, there was nothing that could go right for me in the first hour. Oh, that's another thing because I'm not super famous. I have to arrive. Like it felt like a day early. Like you have time. <laughs> People forget for the, the carpet, carpet starts so early for them. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you're watching the Academy Awards, let's say they start at 6 PM. Trust me. People have been on that carpet since three. Like probably I was in like the early group and same. Another thing people don't realize like the vanity fair Oscar party, which is like the party you want to go to, or at least it used to be like you have a time when you're allowed to arrive and they do not let you in before that. And you really? can always tell how famous you are by your timing. Like if you're allowed to arrive at like 8 PM, you're really famous. My arrival time is usually around 10 45, 11 30. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I didn't even like want to go that early anyway. But um, yeah, the whole Oscars, the Oscars from the inside is a very different experience than the Oscars from the outside. You, it, I think yours may be when Sasha Baron Cohen dumped ashes on Ryan Seacrest. That might be like the one A, one B. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah Which yeah, might be the most mad I've ever seen somebody on TV before, but it was quite the funny moment. <laughs> I just, I just can't get mad at him for anything he does. I want to sometimes, but God, it's always so funny and comedy wins, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Two quick things before you go. Two daunting questions. And surprisingly, I'm sure, no, it's not Ant-Man or Halloween related. The first one is, mm. quick, what's the better performance from Andy Serkis? Is it Planet of the Apes or is it Dancing to Thriller and 13 going on 30? What's, what's, the, what's the better job? I mean, Caesar. But I, like... <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a fa I'm a real fan of the franchise guys. Like I actually have wait It's I amazing. Have, I, I have a tattoo mm -hmm. on my arm. I don't know if you can see it. It's so tiny. Um it's Caesar's window. <laughs> Oh, that's, oh, so cool. that's a, oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> it's Caesar's. It's so tiny. I'm sorry. You had to see also that angle of my arm, but also um, it's Caesar's window from planet of the eight. So I'm, I mean, like I love Andy's face. I love his face. So dancing trailer with him was really kick-ass and people forget what an amazing actor, like just as a, a human man he can be, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Last Next thing. This, yes. this is daunting. I, everyone gets mad at us because we do this so quickly. We need you to pick six movies. Could be your six favorite movies. Okay. Could be six movies you've seen recently. Could be guilty pleasures. Anything. Something maybe you want people to see more, but we put you on the spot. Okay. You got to pick six movies. I'm ready. Um, Moonstruck, Tootsie, Almost Famous, The Big Lebowski, um, Pretty in Pink, and Citizen Ruth. 
That was way too good. That was amazing. It was really fast. It's like you, someone prepared you for this. No one <laughs> that did. Was, but that was pretty impressive. I Very would have been impressive. more angry if you would have said three, actually. <laughs> yeah, you could, it's, I think I mean, I think six is the perfect number because five, I think a top five is easy, but you always have that one you want to mention. So I think six is the. I think that my sixth one is technically pretty in pink, but mm. but that was this and Ruth man, Laura Dern. I mean, she has to make the list there somewhere for sure. That is oh that's like an amazing poll. Yes, that movie blew my mind. That movie probably is what made like pushed me to like stick with acting and stuff. When when I saw it, I was like, oh, OK. That's and awesome. you left us enough time to say that. I like that you said how big of a fan you are of just the, the Planet of the Apes franchise in general, those three movies, because especially the last two people ask like how confident are you in the Batman movie being good? It's like, well, Matt Reeves did a pretty damn good job mm-hmm. with uh oh, planet of the apes. So yeah. I think it's, I, I have like no concerns like yeah, to do yeah, those, to do that. those movies as well as he did. It's like, come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a genius. And, uh, and Dawn of the planet of the apes was like a, a career highlight for me and it will be forever. It was un, an unbelievable experience and I got to go to ape school. So hello. Ape that's, school, that's, yeah. that's a pretty cool thing. <laughs> though, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's self-center great. on audible. Thank you so much. We'd love Thanks, to talk to you. We do so many more things Thank we you. could have talked about. This is an absolute blast. We'll do it again. Yes, of exactly. course. Okay. Well, Thank do it when you. Reboots comes out. I'm very, very excited for that on oh Hulu. God. I'm so excited too, because I just want to say really fast that I haven't gotten to do a straight up comedy in so long and I need it and I'm excited. So we'll talk about that. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Bye guys. Thank you. Thank you.